All right, so here we are in our last lecture for CIS 77. This will combine uh, chapters 13 and 14 together, and it should not take a long time. Chapter 13 has a bunch of case studies for you to read. I didn't think it was appropriate to spend our time reading through them in class. So I kind of will leave that up to you to read through the, the case studies in that chapter. Chapter 14 uh, really shines a little light into various items that are in our world now or that are upcoming that we need to add on to the list of devices, products, systems that we need to keep an eye out for when doing investigations, especially when going into a site, for example, to do a, uh, to execute a search warrant and capture devices, for example, Internet of Things. Now, IoT devices are anything that didn't have an internet connection before. So that could be smart TVs, thermostats, refrigerators, and et cetera. And the most of these devices are controlled by a smartphone app and or are remotely controlled. This new field of devices has a tremendous potential for investigators. And though they have the uh, quite the challenges to overcome, just like uh, not every tool will work with them, uh, there are a very large number of IoT devices. They all have non-standard formats and different proprietary firmware. So just like with, uh, with PCs where you need to have uh, your one of everything to make a, a good clone, IoT devices just, just exponentially grow that. And while many IoT devices may not be able to be uh, directly forensically imaged, much of their, of their data resides in the cloud. So getting a subpoena for cloud storage can be critical. 5G and Wi-Fi 6. With these networks being deployed and future networks that will follow like Wi-Fi 7 and 6G, forensic investigators need to have the right tools and devices to be able to investigate cases using them. So again, understanding how those technologies work, having the, the proper tools uh, and devices that can use those will be, you know, it's just adding more to the list of things you need to have. Shodan, the computer search engine. This tool helps investigators search for insecure devices such as CCTVs in a particular area to display video evidence that could benefit an investigation. Uh, Shodan is used by both by researchers, by pen testers, by criminals and forensic investigators. So uh, before you add uh, Shodan to your list of, of tools out in the field, make sure that you have the appropriate, um, uh, the appropriate approvals to use. Virtual assistants, you know, it has been publicly recorded that audio files, for example, from Alexa have been used by law enforcement or the, the Amazon ring has been used by law enforcement uh, to see if a victim was home or a suspect was home or near one for a particular event. These devices tend to record everything and upload to their provider. So again, getting a subpoena for cloud stuff uh, comes in handy. A GoPro cameras, another device to, to think about adding. These guys have really good frame by frame capture. So if something happened fast and you noticed that there was a GoPro around, you could use them to slow down and see you know, frame by frame to see if, if a person was there or not, uh, you know, or if, for example, in a, in a car accident, uh, the frame rate could help uh, judge the, the speed of the vehicle before an accident or be able to see things that we didn't necessarily notice the first view around to help in, a, in an investigation. 
uh, police vehicles, since a lot of uh, digital forensics is dealing with law enforcement. Uh, police vehicles have cellular vehicle to everything. It's a 3G PP standard, an alternate to 802.11p for vehicle to vehicle communications. That means police vehicles are connected to the internet and do transmit data using a cradle point router to remotely access building blueprints, maps, aerial views from drones, coordinate with other resources, situational awareness, uh, GPS, telematics, uh, being able to do things like uh, scan license plates, all that kind of stuff. And never forget that with everything we've covered, sometimes low tech solutions help for high tech seizures. For example, uh, the chemical, I'm gonna uh, mess this up, triphenylphosphate phospholine oxide, TPPO is the acronym. <laughs> uh, that's found in all electronics. Dogs can be trained to locate devices uh, by that scent. So if a suspect is trying to hide USB drives or trying to hide uh, stuff from you, sometimes a low tech solution like having a dog trained to sniff out PPO or TPPO will be able to, to find those devices to add to your investigation. Emerging tech is always something that we have to keep in mind. Uh, is it a resin in PCBs? I do not know off the top of my head, but I do know that TPPO is found in all electronics. So maybe it is in a PCB board. So yeah, with all the all the technological advances we have and all the ways that we can get information, sometimes it can easily come down to low tech solutions. Now I want to remind you of the big looming deadline, May 18th. That is when everything is due. All the cases, all the reviews, um, all the all the quizzes, any any cases, everything is all due. Um, Anti forensics is not part of this course. This is more of an introduction into the world of digital forensics, but we don't cover anti-forensics. So yeah, everything is due May 18th, which is 22 days away from the day of this recording. So you have 22 days to complete everything and get it submitted. Remember that anything that you missed prior, you know, in, in any, any module that you missed, you can turn in up until May 18. So if I click on corporate espionage, for example, that's the due until date, May 18, 11.59 PM. So you can submit any assignment, any quiz, anything you've missed up until May 18, 11.59. Tomorrow I'll be doing another round of grading and I'll keep everyone posted as I do more, uh, more grading rounds. But yes, you have 22 days from the day of this recording to submit everything. Yes, all classes end in May. That the week of May 18th is week 16. Any questions, any other questions? Yes, all of my classes and they all have the same due until date. You can always check them 
like I said, just click on any assignment and see the until date, the due until date. That's when it, that's the hard stop. Uh, the chemical name, it's in the lecture note, right there. Cool. Uh, seeing no questions, I will stop this stream. Feel free to ask questions away on Discord as the looming deadline approaches.